Hey, it's Will. I've got a short video on here on setting up Visual Studio to actively debug a VST3 plugin within a VST3 host. Um, and, it, and this can be any VST3 plugin that's made in Visual Studio. I'm using one which of course I made in RackFX, but this would also work for a VST3 plugin that you made from scratch or for one of the VST3 plugins that's a sample plugin that comes with the VST3 SDK. So the first thing is I've got uh, the software set up in the debug Win32 configuration and I've gone ahead and I've built and compiled the uh, plugin and I've copied that VST3 plugin into my VST3 plugins folder for Reaper. Now, it's important that you make a copy of the plugin rather than moving it. If you move it, when you try to run the debugger, Visual Studio will say, I can't find your plugin, and it'll try to rebuild it. So the first thing to do is, once we've got the, the plugin copied and we're ready to, to debug, we need to set up Visual Studio to do that. The way that you do that is to go to the solution over here and right click and choose properties or use the little wrench here and go to the properties and go to the debug tab. Make sure that the configuration is the one that you're looking for, debug Win32 or X64. And we need to change the command here. So this is the, this is the software that's going to get run. This is the client that's going to run your VST3 plugin. So the way that we do that is by using the drop down and going to browse and we're going to go look for Reaper. Now, Reaper's executable is in x86, Reaper, and there it is, reaper.exe. So I'm going to double click on that, and I'm going to set up the, um, the host to be Reaper. The next thing that we need to do is to change this attach from no to yes. This, so what's going to happen is we're going to start Reaper, and then we're going to start Visual Studio's debugger, when we start the debugger, it will attach to that process automatically. So hit the apply button to set that up. So now we're ready to go. And I'm going to start Reaper. And now that Reaper is running, I will start the Visual Studio debugger. So it's going. And I am in the vstprocessor.cpp. This is the main object file for the make VST projects in RackFX. This is the constructor. And I'm going to place a breakpoint in the constructor. Now the breakpoint is uh, white and it says the breakpoint will not currently be hit. That's because the plugin isn't loaded yet. So I'll go into Reaper and go to this track and I will load this plugin. So there it is, multi fx underscore vst. And you can double click or say okay or whatever. So I'll double click here. As soon as I do that, the breakpoint gets hit. That means we're in. We're now attached to Reaper, and we can now um, actively debug. Any of the projects that are inside of the solution, any of these object files, you can now put a breakpoint in. Anywhere in the processor object or in the RackFX core, so in the CPP files, let's say, for example, for the GUI stuff or for the processing, you can put breakpoints everywhere. And you'll need, if you don't know how to use the debugger in Visual Studio, you'll need to look, do a little bit of reading on that for using these controls. They look slightly different in the different versions of Visual Studio, um, but they all do the same thing. So what I'll do is, I know I just got my constructor hit. I can go to the watch window, which is here, and I went ahead and I've typed in this into the watch window. When you type in this and expand it, you, you're looking at the VST processor object over here, which is actually just called processor. And here are its base classes. And so you can take a look at the base classes and all the variables on the base classes. You can also look at all of the variables within the processing object itself. One of those is your RackFX plugin. So there is your RackFX plugin core. Here are all of its variables. And so we can see how they're set. Now, just to do a demonstration, I am going to... Um, I'm going to go to the process function, which is, does all the audio processing, and put a breakpoint in it. I'll put a breakpoint right here after we pick up the number of channels. And then I'm going to hit uh, continue in Visual Studio. Now, if we were in um, a, a client like Cubase, when I hit continue, nothing would happen. This process function would not get called until we hit play in Cubase and start streaming audio through the plugin. However, as I'll demonstrate, in Reaper, uh, we automatically hit this function even though there's no audio streaming. 
The reason for that is that Reaper, along with several other clients, will send zeros into your plugin and it will stream nothing into your plugin so that your plugin is always running and always online. Uh, it depends on the client, depending on how they, how they did that um, as to whether or not you see that. So I can then go through and step through and go through and look at all the stuff that's going on inside of the process function here. Uh, I can also go into, now I've got this set up to use process audio frame. So I could go in and put a breakpoint here on process audio frame, hit continue, and then step into process audio frame. And now I'm inside of uh, my Rack Effects plugin, which is called Multi Effects. You can then go through that and then watch how everything is working inside of, uh, inside of your plugin core. You can also set breakpoints in the code that generates your GUI. You can set breakpoints in the destructor to make sure that you're properly destroying anything that you've created. If you are, if you have a problem and you're having a crash whenever audio streams, well then you would put your breakpoint inside of the process function and figure out where that crash is going. Um, another thing that's interesting about this is that one of the things that Visual Studio uh, will let you do is not only can we look at these different variables, for example, the num channels variable is right here, and I have just click on it and drag it and drop it into the watch window, but you can also poke uh, values into your variable. So I could change the num channels to one if I wanted to. Now that's gonna be a bad idea here because it's gonna kind of mess up the processing, but the bottom line is if your mode of operation for trying to debug is to look at your code and then kind of second guess what may or may not be going on and then changing that code and recompiling and then just sort of crossing your fingers and hoping that it works. Um, that might work for a few things, but if you spend more than five or 10 minutes doing that, it's time to actually get in and run the debugger and go in and step through the code and find out what's going on. You'll, you'll solve the problem way faster if you do it that way. And the ability of, uh, in Visual Studio, to alter these values and manipulate them within the function is going to really help you solve your problem. It's also interesting, uh, if you see a garbage value in here, then you'll automatically know what the problem is. So I'm just going to hit the continue button. It's going to come right back in again because this thing is going to get called over and over and over and over again. So hit continue there. So... Um, there's the plugin, there's the GUI for it. Now to demonstrate this, I can go into the, um, into the process object here and let's go to the destructor, which is right here. So this is what's gonna get called when the plugin is, uh, is killed off. So I'm gonna hit remove here and boom, there goes the destructor. And so I've deleted the rack effects core and then I can move on from there. If you're having a problem where your plugin crashes when you unload it, or you're getting a memory leak, then most likely you're not clearing out um, stuff that you've dynamically declared inside of the destructor. Then we'll hit go, and then that's it. Once I add the plugin back in again, it will trap on in the constructor all over again, and I can continue the debug cycle from that point on. So that's a short video on how to run the debugger in Visual Studio for your VST3 plugins. And I will make some similar videos for Xcode for both VST and AU and AAX as well. See you in the next video.